So in this problem, you will be solving the velocity, the final velocity of two uh, trucks or train truck trucks uh, with corresponding mass and initial velocity of positive 5 meters per second for the first car, that is 2,000 kilogram, and the second car, which is 6,000 kilograms with negative 3 meters per second, meaning this huge car is moving to the left while the smaller car of 2,000 kilogram mass is moving to the right. Question is, we are trying to figure out the velocity of the first car or the 2,000 kilogram car compared to the final velocity of the 6,000 kilogram car. If if it will experience an inelastic collision that they fail to couple together or to get attached together and experience a 5% kinetic energy loss after collision. So meaning the collision will, or the cars will touch each other and then lose 5% uh, of its original kinetic energy before its collision. So step number one is to apply the law of conservation of momentum, which means that the initial velocity or initial mass multiplied by the initial velocity plus the second mass of the second object multiplied by the initial velocity of the second object m and then the final velocity of the second object plus mass and the final velocity of the second object first object and second object now let's make the assumption of vf let vf is equivalent to x and vf final velocity lowercase vf to be y so let's make those following assumption in order for us to uh, Eliminate some of the subscript that might be a uh, hurdle for us when we simplify the equation. So let's just plug in those values of 2000 multiplied by the initial velocity of positive 5 plus 6000 multiplied by the initial velocity of negative 3. And we have the mass of 2000 multiplied by x and adding 6000 multiplied by y. Just to make it or to simplify the process, let us all divide them by 2000, which is a number that we uh, can use to simplify the thousand to eliminate the zeros to make our calculation simple. So let's just divide all of them by 2000. So 2000 divided by 2000, that's making it 1 multiplied by positive 5 plus 6000 divided by 2000, so that's 3 times negative 3 equivalent to 1. Because 2,000 divided by 2,000 is 1 times x. Plus 6,000 divided by 2,000 is 3 multiplied by y. So that will give us 5. 3 times 3. Or 3 times negative 3 is 9. And that is equivalent to x plus 3y. So therefore, we have negative 4 equals x plus 3y. Placing 3y to the other side of the equation and reorganizing our equation to make it much easier to read. So that will provide us negative 4 minus 3y, and this will be our equation number 1. So if you notice, we have two unknowns, that is x and y, or the final velocity of the first object and the final velocity of the second object. In our math class, if we have two unknowns, one equation is not enough. So we must establish the second equation. 
But before that, we should establish the second equation. We should also consider that by just using the um, law of conservation of kinetic energy without allocating that 5% kinetic energy loss might be something that will not work. So let's analyze two sections of a collision. So let's start with the before collision part. So before collision, the total kinetic energy initial, that is before, is equivalent to one half MVI square plus one half the second object's mass multiplied by its initial velocity square. So I will just simply plug in the values, which is 1000 multiplied by 2000, I'm sorry, 1 over 2, multiplied by 2000, and then we have positive 5 square, plus 1 half 6000, multiplied by negative 3 square. So let's further simplify it, so it's 5 square, 25 times 2000, divided by one half so this will give us an answer of 25000 joules for the first equipment or for the first truck plus okay so right here we must we must um we must seriously look at this negative 3 because negative 3 square meaning if you square a negative value it will change into positive because negative times negative is simply positive. So that's 9 times 6,000 divided by 2 will give us 27,000. By adding this 2, we will have a total kinetic energy before collision, and that is 52,000 joules. So total kinetic energy initial. Now, since I don't have room anymore for uh, to write for the next step, what I'm going to do is just move this one a bit and continue with the next page. So I will continue on the next page. Now let's analyze the after or right after the collision happened. Please. Please feel free to uh, pause the video if you need to copy down some of the steps for the process that was written before. So we have total kinetic energy after collision, which is equivalent to total kinetic energy initial minus our losses. And in our case, this is 5% of the original, 5% loss. Five percent loss. Okay, so five percent loss. So therefore our total kinetic energy is fifty-two thousand minus fifty-two thousand. And let's take 5% of the original kinetic energy total, or that is 0.05%, or 0 0.05. So you multiply 52,000 by 0 0.05. So this will give you 52,000 minus 26,000, or the total kinetic energy after. After collision, just right after collision, is 49,400 joules. So there was a decrease in kinetic energy. So that kinetic energy was not destroyed, but instead it was converted or transferred to uh, the uh, tracks or because of, uh, of transformation from kinetic energy to sound energy. Now, if... Total kinetic energy 
after can also be expanded into one half MVF squared plus one half MVF squared without forgetting that VF is X and then lowercase VF is Y. Let us plug in the total kinetic energy final, which is right here, 49,000. So let me just scoot it up. So this will give us 49,400 is equivalent to one half the mass of the first car after collision is will remain 2000 final velocity is x squared plus one half 6000 m y squared so 49400 2000 so that is 1000 x squared plus 3,000 y squared. So again, we have those huge numbers, which is 1,000. So we can actually divide all of them by the least of the coefficient, which is 1,000. To get rid of those huge zero, uh, huge number of zeros. So therefore, 49,000 divided by 4, uh, 49,400 divided by 1,000 will give us 49.4. 1,000 divided by 1,000 is 1. 3,000 divided by 1,000 is 3y squared. So this will be our second equation. So second equation. Moving on with the next step. Now that we have the two equations with two unknowns, meaning our first equation is x minus 4 minus 3y, which is our first equation. And we have the second equation, which is 49.4 equals x squared plus 3y squared. So number two. So our next step is to make sure that we substitute the most logical process to substitute the value of x from equation 1 to the equation number 2, which means whatever this value is, whatever this value, we plug in to the value of x. Now we can start by processing of 49.4, instead of using x, we have negative 4, negative 3y, and u square it, plus 3y square. Next step is to just copy 49.4, and let's take the square of this binomial of negative 4, negative 3y, and all we have to do is Process your table. And that is negative 4, negative 3y, negative 4, negative 3y. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Negative 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, positive 12y. That's positive. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12y and negative 3 times negative 3 will give us 9 y times y that is y squared so combining like terms so therefore we can move it in our equation so let's have 16 plus 12y plus 9y squared it's not 12, but 24. Okay, 24. Be careful with it. So this will give us 16 plus 24y plus 9y squared plus 3y squared. 
So by combining like terms and putting everything on one side of the equation, so starting with the uh, radius exponent, so we have 9y squared plus 3y squared plus 24y plus 16, and moving this to the other side of the equation by subtracting negative by subtracting 49.4 on both sides of the equation. So that is 49.4 equals 0. Let's combine those like terms. So 9 plus 3 is 12y squared plus 24y. 40, uh, positive 16 minus 49.4. So 49.4 is greater than 16. So therefore, we'll have negative 33.4 equals 0. Again, we can further simplify this by just dividing is uh, so dividing all our terms with the greatest coefficient, which is divided by 12, each individual one. So 12 divided by 12 is y, so that's y squared. 12 divided by 12 is 1, multiplying it by y squared, so that's y squared plus 12, 24 divided by, two, two, uh, divided by 12, so that's 2 y minus 33.4 divided by 12 is negative approximately negative 2.8 2.7 and change so negative 2.8 so now this is something that we can simplify what i'm going to do i am going to move this a little bit higher and get another sheet of paper where we can write it down our next process So let me just copy down that equation on the next sheet. And we we'll move on with our, hopefully our final step. Which is y squared. Sorry for too much movement. So that's y squared plus 2y minus 2.8 equals 0. Just copying it down. That's just to make it cleaner. Right. So the coefficient, so figure out the coefficient of each of the terms in our equation so there's a coefficient for y squared which is one coefficient for y is two coefficient for our constant of course it's 2.8 so therefore this is c this one is letter b and letter a which means we must apply our quadratic equation or quadratic formula in order to figure out for the value of y quadratic formula states that b or minus b plus or minus the square root of b square minus the val minus the product of 4 multiplied by a and c divided by 2 multiplied by a. So all we have to do is plug in the values. b is negative 2 or negative b now it's 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 square minus 4 times a of 1 times c, which is negative 2.8 over 2 times 1. So what I'm going to do is just simplify or follow the order of operation. So let's copy down negative 2 plus or minus. So 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 4, or 4, times negative 2.8 times 1 is 11.2. Negative, so therefore that will change into positive 11.2. And that is divided by 2. 
let's just simplify this further here so that's negative 2 plus or minus 4 plus 11.2 so that is 15.2 over 2 simplifying it further taking the square root of 15.2 that is negative 2 plus or minus 15.2 square root is 3.9 divided by 2. So at this stage, there are two possible answers. First possible answer, let's divide this into 2. And that is y. What if negative 2 plus 3.9 over 2? Or y is equivalent to negative 2 minus 3.9 over 2. By looking at this, we can further simplify this by negative 2 plus 3.9. So that's 1.9, positive divided by 2. Or that is simply 0.95 meters per second square. So the second object is possibly moving to the right, even though before the collisions, if we can go and review our initial solutions let me just go over some of the sheets that we have here let's organize everything okay so here we go so originally it's moving to the left now after collision it's supposed to be moving to the right at a very slow speed of 0.95 meters per second if that's the case, we have value of x. The x equation, originally from our first equation, which is x is equivalent to minus 4, minus 3, times y. So the possible value for our velocity after collision which is the velocity after collision of the 2000 kilograms object which is the value of x that we're solving so that is negative 4 minus 3 and what is your y 0.95 so your x is equivalent to negative 4 minus 2.8 so x is possibly be moving to the left or the 2000 kilogram object will be moving to the left while the other object is moving to the right at 0.95 meters per second and the motion of the 2000 kilogram object is 6 or negative 6.85 meters per second what if we want to figure out the combination of the second option, which is y minus 2 minus 3.9 divided by 2. So this will give us negative 5.9 over 2. Or y is simply equivalent to negative 2.95 meters per second. In that case, let's analyze this first. Originally, it's moving at negative 3 meters per second. It bumped to a, to a smaller object with a greater velocity. And it will only reduce its initial velocity of 5%. To some might think, oh, maybe that's the 5% of kinetic energy that was mentioned in the problem. 5% of kinetic energy loss. But let's further analyze it. And what is the result? This could be possible. Uh, this could be a possible answer. However, let's, it's not over until we analyze the other object, which is the 2,000 kilogram car. So applying the same equation we used from the other result, from the other equation, from, from simplifying the quadratic equation. So that's negative 3 multiplied by y. x is negative 4 multiplied, or minus 3 
times negative 2.95. So by simplifying it further, we have negative 4. Negative times negative is going to be positive. So 2.95, so that will give us 6.85. Subtracting, six, uh, subtracting 4 from 6.85, we have a value of positive 2.85 meters per second. So if we go back to our original condition, by looking at this result, it means after collision, after collision, object on the right side, which is the 6,000 kilogram, is continuously moving to the left at negative 2.95 meters per second. However, the car is moving to the right, which is 2.8 meters per second. So meaning, if the pins represent the two cars, the pin, the red pin, which represents the bigger car, is still moving to the right, and this car is moving to the left after collision, or moving to the right. The other one's moving to the left, so the object on the right is moving to the left, the object on the left side is moving to the right, which is a complete violation of, of uh, concept in science that matter cannot occupy the same space, and we cannot penetrate two objects at the same time like this without causing a disruption of its state of matter. So, further, we can ignore the result on the right side, and we can say that our final answer is, therefore, V of F is actually your X, and the value of your X is negative 6.85 meters per second, while v of f is your y, which is positive 0.95 meters per second. So this is your video for a problem that we solve. If two objects collide and these two cars collide inelastically, so this is an inelastic collision. So this is an inelastic collision. However, they fail to attach to each other or to couple together. So final velocity of your x, you're moving to the left. And that is negative 6.85 meters per second. While the other object will reverse its velocity to a different direction with a less with a with a lesser velocity of 0.9 meter per second